I'm gonna get over here as well. Let's get the challenge of soldering these because this is such a wide area. This whole bit here is all gonna act like kind of a heat sink. So, especially the backs of these um, uh, shot kit diodes. It's a wide area I have to heat up to get to unstick. So, that's where you want a big soldering iron, which is what I've got. I probably could dig out my other soldering iron at 80 water, but that's very deep in storage. Yeah, that is, I don't know. Uh, this one here should do. I might take a bit of a while though. I could get a tip kit. Get a tip kit for this soldering station. And have like a, a wide spade bit. That wouldn't be a bad idea actually. Should have better a tip kit and get a wide spade bit for big jobs like this. So I've got some heat shrink, but uh, I don't know if it's the right size. It was never shrunk. It's off those um, Chinese switch mode power supplies and the DVD players and stuff. It comes off the um, wrapped around the power cord. I don't think there's one in here. I've got might be inside. Uh, I'll probably do it when I show you. It's in the it somewhere. But sometimes you'll find heat shrink and things like that that hasn't been shrunk. You can uh, pull it off and reuse it. Uh, this one doesn't have it, but some appliances you have like a heat shrink with a um, with a little um, ferrite ring, and maybe like a heat shrink around here or something that's not shrunk. Occasionally you'll find that. I have got that some of that unshrunk. As I said, I'm not sure if it's the right size. I have to go and dig it out of storage because that'd be idea. That's just the same type that I cut off this. The same type as this, nice and thick and big. I don't know if it's the right size, but we'll find out. So they get this uh, new heat shrink on when I'm finished. Just on sort of one end, stick it over. Anyway, here's going to be a big challenge. Uh, well, that'll come off. Easy enough. Well, I've got to put some ventilation in here. That's the next thing I'm going to do now. Well, what I mission, it's took me nearly, half, nearly an hour to do that. That's 30 watt. To 30, 30 to 40, anything but in the 30 to 40 watt range, that's not enough. I had to carefully hit it with that. Luckily, this was a 200 degree Celsius sided cable. I broke one tracer off, damn it, but I think I can just join it between here on this solder here, it's on the same trace. Yeah, it is too. This one's on the same trace, so that's not so bad. I can just solder that and bridge it to the top of the um, FET, I mean the um, shot kit diode. Man, that was a mission. I destroyed one, snapped all the plastic off, and exposed the die. Wow. Yeah, see? That was the first one I tried getting off. Flip the bloody tracer off. It's, it's more than just solder when they do surface mount. They put like a glue on it too, and they put it through the flowing machine. It's quite a big process. I want to do sort of this now so I can run the heat shrink over it. This is going to be a mission and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I think I need a bigger soldering iron. Damn it. What a mission. Well, I got them on pretty easily. Wish it was that easy to get them off. Now, I probably should do something. I could make something with a wooden handle and a chunk of aluminium on the end as a tool to hold those down. What that'll do, that'll act as kind of a heat sink so that the component doesn't get too hot at the same time and overheat it and destroy it by the heat. That's one thing it's, you've got to be careful of when you're doing surface mount soldering. You can kill things at too high a temperature as well. There's plenty of solder in there. Not as much as there was before, but... It will take the current anyway, even if it does fail again or blow like a fuse. It's either going to blow the fits again or blow a fuse. Like the way I've soldered it, there's not enough solder there, but I think that'll that's a pretty damn good um, join. That'll still take a lot of current. Even if they fail short, it's going to blow like a fuse either way. What a mission. <laughs> yeah, just getting it one done. Big to its lead free solder, especially. That's what makes it even harder. I want to get this off before I solder those two fets on. This has to come off, so I can get my heat shrink on. Well, the job looks the same as a factory job. <laughs> Dog shit quality, but that's how it was in the factory. It's a good solder. 
I got a, it's not a very easy to do when you get a small tipped iron. You need to really need a, a large tipped chisel point high wattage iron. It means everything. But I may do it what I've got. That little uh, olive joint uh, tool there for the copper pipe. We have to permanently to hold that down. There we go. What a mission, but we've finally accomplished it. Mission accomplished. Whew. Now we're going to do some cleaning, make sure we haven't got any shorts. I don't have any bloody flux remover. This is resin cord solder. I've got to get some flux remover to make it look proper so I can inspect for shorts. Well, you can see here I've bridged it with a trace I ripped off earlier, but that's easy to fix. Yeah, I've got to get the right soldering irons. I might have to start buying up every soldering iron I see, I think. <laughs> wow. Yeah, me cheap ones I've got in storage with a big tip. If I grind a nice chisel point, one of my old ones, the Hake one I don't think that's high enough. That's a, I, need a, I haven't got a chisel point for that one, so I can't use that one. But one of the other cheap ones I've got that's still um, I used to use in my caravan. I'd make a chisel point for that, and that'd be perfect for this, because I think that's an 80 to 100 watt range soldering iron. That'd be perfect for this. Let that cool completely before I put the heat shrink on. Lucky I've got some, that's thinner, but I couldn't find where I put the other um, heavy duty stuff. Alright. Okay, viewers, well, moment of truth. Got a nice and double heat shrunk. Not as thick as the original heavy duty stuff, but. Yeah, I think it's the same thickness with two layers of ordinary generic heat, heat shrink. Definitely. That's as good as that one here, the original one. Perfect. Hey! We've got workage. I could have done this test before to appear, but eh. Ah oh well. They're probably damaged anyway. It's a good thing though, because it, based on the tests, they were damaged. That'll start a car. I really can't see much of a difference, but I just chuck it on the car anyway. The car's got a new battery in it, so... I did a test off camera with it, I mean. That's got a new battery, so I can't really tell the difference how the starter motor reacted, but that's the way they had it. <laughs> you really need a car with a flat battery to do a proper test. If I was still on the, on the farm, I could have done a definite test, but yeah. Load is going to be the ultimate test. But I haven't got any other 12 volt appliances here with me, so. Anyway, viewers, I'll call that a success anyway. Thanks for watching.